Let's take a look at the Pooled Variance T procedure. And we'll start here with an example. Bloodlead levels for random samples of Egyptian police officers. We have Cairo traffic officers over here and uh, officers from the suburbs here. And it looks like Cairo traffic officers who have a median bloodlead level around there have a higher bloodlead level than those in the suburbs. So our points of interest, we want, they want to test if there is a significant difference between those groups. Or is there strong evidence that those two groups have a different population means? And we might want to estimate the difference in the population means mu1 minus mu2 with a confidence interval. We're going to assume that we have independent random samples from the populations of interest, which is the uh, case for our example, and that we have normally distributed populations. And we also have a third one that might seem a bit curious at first, that we have equal population variances. The pooled variance T procedure assumes that we have equal population variances. Now, we probably wish we didn't actually have to assume this, but we do in order for the mathematics to work out for this procedure. So we're going to say that sigma 1 squared and sigma 2 squared are actually equal, and they equal, let's say, some overall common variance sigma squared. So what we're going to do first of all is estimate the common variance sigma squared with the pooled sample variance sp squared. And our pooled sample variance is a weighted average of the two sample variances here. A weighted average weighted by their individual degrees of freedom. And this is estimating sigma squared. sp squared estimates sigma squared. When we have that, we calculate the standard error of the difference in sample means. This is our standard error of the difference in sample means, or in other words, our estimator of the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of this difference here. Why is that important? Well, that's going to come up in all of our statistical inference formulas. So we have our 100 times 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval for the difference in the population means. It's going to take similar form to things that we've seen before. We take the best estimator of the difference in the population means, and that is simply our difference in the sample means, x1 bar minus x2 bar. And we add and subtract a t value from the computer or the table times the standard error of this quantity over here, times the standard error of that estimator. That type of formula should look familiar to you because it is very similar to things that we did in the one sample problems. We're going to need degrees of freedom. Our degrees of freedom equals, well, what's that going to be? Well, I can just give you a formula here at first, but we can think about this a bit, because if we know the logic, it might help a bit, rather than simply look at formulas. The degrees of freedom for the t are the degrees of freedom for whatever variance we are using. So let's go back. Our pooled variance in the denominator here, we divided by n1 plus n2 minus 2. That came from the fact that we lost two degrees of freedom along the way because we had to estimate the means of those two populations with the sample means. And we lost two degrees of freedom. So overall, we have n1 plus n2 minus two degrees of freedom. We, that's why we divided by that here for our uh, pooled variance. And so that is also our degrees of freedom for the t. Degrees of freedom for our t, n1 plus n2 minus 2. Very frequently, we also want to carry out this hypothesis test of the null hypothesis that the difference in the means is equal to zero, or equivalently, that the population means are equal. Very commonly, we want to carry out this hypothesis test. And so we have our usual structure here, our uh, estimator of this difference in population means. Subtract the hypothesized value, so I could put minus zero if I felt like it, but that just goes away, right? So we could forget about that. Divided by the standard error, and we have a T. And again, of course, we have degrees of freedom of N1 plus N2 minus 2. And we could test a different hypothesis if we so desired. Mu1 minus mu2 is equal to 10, say. And then we'd simply subtract 10 minus 10 in the numerator. But that is not typically the question of interest. Typically, the question of interest is testing whether the populations have the same mean. So that is by far the more common test that we test. So let's look at an example. We will go back to the Cairo and uh, suburb uh, police officers here, and we have a summary of this information. You might want to just pause this and take a look and make sure you're familiar with where these calculations come from. But first, we are getting our pooled sample variance. Our pooled sample variance ends up being that value. It is a weighted average of the sample variances, or in other words, a weighted average of the squares of those quantities up there. And then we use that to come up with our standard error. So our SP is just the square root of our pooled sample variance, and then times the square root of 1 over N1 plus 1 over N2.
and we get 1.180. That is the standard error of x1 bar minus x2 bar, or in other words, our estimate of the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x1 bar minus x2 bar. Now the calculations are pretty easy. We've done the hard part. So a 95% confidence interval for the difference in the population means. Well, we take the difference in the sample means. 29.2 minus 18.2. And we add and subtract. Well, we need our appropriate t-value. Our appropriate t-value, well, we get our degrees of freedom. Our degrees of freedom, n1 plus n2 minus 2. And if we look that up again at our data, that's 126 plus 50 minus 2, or 174. That's a pretty large number, and so some sources recommend just looking up your appropriate value in a standard normal table under these circumstances, but I feel that it's a little better to actually use the t-table. If we've got a t and we've got 174 degrees of freedom, let's look it up in a t-table or preferably using a computer. And if we do that, we would see that the t appropriate t-value is 1.974, and then we multiply this by our standard error. Now this works out to 11.0 plus and minus 2.33, or if we write this in as an interval, 8.67 to 13.33. Now that is a 95% confidence interval for mu1 minus mu2, or in other words, we can be 95% confident that that difference lies somewhere in that interval. Now recall, mu1 was the population mean blood lead level for Cairo traffic officers, and mu2 was the population mean blood lead level for officers in the suburbs. One point of interest is that this interval lies entirely to the right of zero. So loosely speaking, it looks like mu1 is actually greater than mu2, or that traffic officers in Cairo have greater blood lead levels on average than those in the suburbs. But to investigate that, uh, we can actually carry out a hypothesis test. So let's do that. So let's test the null hypothesis that the populations have equal mean blood lead levels. Or in other words, test the null hypothesis that mu1 equals mu2. And I could take my alternative hypothesis. Let's say we're doing a two-sided. Some might feel differently depending on the problem, but let's go with a two-sided alternative here. And we're going to do our regular old t-test. And we're simply going to take the difference in the sample means, and we're going to divide by the standard error of the difference in the sample means. So we get 29.2 minus 18.2 over 1.180, and that is 9.32. I recall again that my degrees of freedom are 174, and so when I want my p-value, I get 9.32, which is way out here in this right tail, and my p-value, as you should know by now, is double the area way out to the right. That is my p-value, double the area to the right of that. Now, if you go to a table, you'll find that that's a very small area, but if you go to a computer, you can see that the p-value, using a computer, I can find that my p-value is equal to 5.2 times 10 to the negative 17. Or a tiny, 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 tiny value. Very close to zero. Very, very strong evidence against this null hypothesis. Very strong evidence that those two groups do not have the same population mean. Now, what does that mean in the context of this problem? Well, this was the mean of the Cairo officers. This was the mean of those in the suburbs, the sample means, that is. So it looks like the Cairo traffic officers have a greater mean blood lead level than those in the suburbs. And if we took a look at the box plots, what we are saying with that tiny p-value is that this observed difference in these box plots is a significant difference. That difference there is a significant difference. It is very unlikely to see something like that due to chance alone. And it is very likely this is a real effect. Uh, that's loosely speaking, of course. And what we're saying is there is a significant difference there. And our Cairo traffic officers actually seem to have a greater uh, population mean blood lead level. So these calculations are a bit of a pain to do by hand, so we usually use a computer to carry out the calculations for us and allow us to focus on the results of the analysis. And here, if we look at this, our 95% confidence interval from the computer, very, very similar to what we got, only it has more decimal places. Our T statistic, very, very similar to what we got, all the rest of it. And so really, in the real world, we put it into a computer, we do some plots, we make sure all uh, our assumptions are reasonable, and then we go through and we draw conclusions based on what we see here. And our conclusions based on this output here, would be exactly the same as what we had above.